Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we're gonna look at um, Azure AD users and groups. And uh, this video is geared towards your uh, AZ500 exam preparation. So we'll look at some of the features that are covered in that exam. So Active Directory is uh, just just like your um, if you have any experience with the Windows uh, Active Directory uh, on-prem. Uh, you have similar features available in this cloud-based identity and access management offered by Azure for your cloud uh, in the cloud so let's think about what typically you do in an Active Directory uh, environment so usually you manage your identity and your access what kind of access they they can have uh, if you go to the last video I have already showed you guys how to create an, a directory instance and what is the default directory instance and stuff like that so in this video I'm going to focus on users and groups and some conditional uh, policies to automatically assign roles so when you create an, a directory uh, usually you would be the only user there might be some other users that will get uh, in inherit some permissions but there won't be any other users so as your organization grows you need to add users and you also not only you want to create the users give them their digital identity but you also have to give them the roles the roles comes with the permissions so once I log in with my username and password what am I authorized to do now if you say you want a VM administrator who can uh, deploy virtual machines now if you need 10 VM administrators and every time going uh, adding a new person and reassigning all the roles and permissions it becomes very difficult and uh, time consuming so at that time what do you want to do you want to create a group and assign the roles and permission to a group and make those users as part of the group now the group assignment can be manual uh, or you can create uh, rules that will allow you to automatically add users to some of the groups that you that you have defined so let's start with some uh, user creation so uh, I already have some users in here okay and uh, we'll, we'll do some more uh, let's uh, do user and because we are just uh, creating for AZ500 so let's do AZ500 uh, user 1 and uh, this I don't have any other domain in here so it's gonna be the default domain name uh, name uh, say AZ500 user 1 uh, first name last name I don't really care let's put a password in here uh, okay I'm not going to assign any groups or any roles at this time uh, everything else uh, usage location let's put uh, uh, United States United States uh, then job info is a uh, VM admin and department say IT okay and I'm gonna create that user and it says successfully created that user do you see that now let's go and look look at that's the user that I have so I click on that user okay now uh, I have it you know you have several options so I can edit the user and change some of the stuff I can give him a new image update his name first name last name properly who is my manager I can add the manager and information add uh, uh, say city say Atlanta okay uh, say a state is Georgia okay uh, that's about it I don't need anything else I just uh, save this one uh, what else can we do with this assigned roles uh, you do not see any roles. so this user uh, if if he logs in right now 
to this uh, Azure directory, he will not see anything. So to prove that, let's open an incognito window. Okay, so let's go to portal.azure.com and hopefully I don't have anything in here so now the other thing I need to do I need to um, just copy the username in full so since I do not want to um, make any mistake in here so I'm just copy this uh, full name of that user and I'll come over here I'll put it in here and then uh, let's uh, No, uh, I need to put a username, a password. Okay, now sign in. It should uh, ask me to change my password. So let's uh, put the password again. And uh, I'll just use a random password that's uh, suggested by uh, Chrome at this time. And say update all updates. And I'm going to just save it. So uh, at the end of the lab, I'm going to reset the password. So uh, don't try to log in using this username and password to this account. All right. So if you uh, if you are the user and uh, you are you are not logging in, don't lose access to your account. So it's telling make sure you can reset your password. We need to collect some additional information. So what this user can do, you can uh, it can set up authentication uh, using a phone or authentication using an email. So if you remember, I didn't really provide any email address for this user, or uh, you know I didn't do anything too much. So authentication email, maybe just put some email in here. Uh, let's do uh, and uh, just say email me. Okay. So now it's asking me to verify uh, the message, and then it will let me sign in. So let's see if I'm already logged in to my email. I just want a new window, uh, Gmail. And I'm going to pause this video for a second to get my password, OK? Or I'm here then this is the security code that I got from Microsoft so I'm just gonna copy that one uh, go back to actually I'm just I can close this close this everything else go back to here and just uh, paste, the, paste the password and it's verifying my email so now um, I have a recovery option available to my to my uh, user it's asking stay signed in why not so for now let's stay signed in in my incognito window so what I want to show you is the experience when you log in and you do not have any access okay so I'll do maybe later and what I want you to uh, see if you look at subscription and it should say that you do not have any access to anything so you do not have any access so really you can do much okay so if you go in here until you have a subscription you can't do anything uh, say you keep click on virtual machine you want to add some virtual machine so it's again it's going to put you send you back to this page where it says hey come on start with an Azure free trial and then you can do stuff uh, let's see if you can do the manage active active directory so if you go there it looks like you can see at least the active directory can you see other users let's look in there yeah it looks like uh, once you're a member of this team or of this active directory you can at least see who else are the other users of this particular tenant uh, can I click on this oh yeah so I can even uh, look up uh, the other users and their general information assigned roles 
uh, if I click on that one I can see this person got a global administrator role but can I do anything else can I maybe delete the user or something no those options are uh, uh, grayed out for me manage ping can I manage PIM for this person no I cannot uh, let's see what else uh, can I do or oh, within the active directory uh, users can I create new users no I can new guest users can I request a new guest user oh look at that so even since I'm a user I can actually request other people to join so say uh, let's try AZ 500 uh, guest 1 okay and then do yahoo.com I don't know if there's an email address like that but seems like I can send invitation to request other users to join okay so the invitation is sent and you can see that uh, this is showed up uh, over here that somebody sent an invitation to this particular user to join uh, this active directory uh, deleted user can I see that yeah so it's uh, I, I, I can also see there's one user used to be there and uh, been deleted uh, user setting let me see if I can uh, either options in there but they're all grayed out so we I can't do much with it uh, sign in activity uh, summary it's uh, right now it's a uh, you don't have access to this area contact your global administrator audit logs uh, this one again no nothing is available to me operations did nothing really not not much so let's go back see if I have access to the groups so if I click on the groups again I do have access to the group can I do anything uh, let's see can I create a new group uh, looks like I can uh, let's do uh, AZ 500 uh, user group test okay uh, and uh, the one thing you see that the uh, member membership type you cannot change that that one is grayed out and uh, let's see if I can create it, it says the group is created and that's pretty unusual I wouldn't uh, I I didn't think that you will be able to uh, what about deleting some groups can I do can I delete any of the groups let's let's just select that one uh, that one for that group since I created I think I have the delete option available to me what about some other groups Wow so for these looks like I also have the delete option available to me and that's very very weird to me I I wouldn't expect that to happen uh, we'll test out if we can really delete some of this group uh, you know what let's just delete one of the script and see if I can delete this selected group yeah okay all right <laughs> fail to delete group that makes me feel better so uh, but I think it's a poor UI design maybe so if I don't have permission just like the others where you know the options are grayed out this button should be grayed out to me as well but for this group I should be able to delete this group and since I am I created this group and look see this group is uh, delete the deletion was uh, successful because I created this group that can't make sense but for the others although it says the delete is available but if you click on it fail to delete so you cannot delete it because you, you did you're not the creator you're not the owner so you can't do much with it alright so let's go back to directory uh, roles and administrators I think you can probably view some of that stuff but but your role is just a user so you can do much over here at this time alright so next what I want to do is uh, go back to the other window over here now uh, let's assign some roles uh, let's see what do you want to make this user okay so to, to assign some roles to this user uh, what we can do we can go back to 
users default directory uh, go to roles and administrators okay uh, let's see maybe he's a VM administrator so let's uh, search by VM there's nothing let's see virtual machine it's nothing so let's let's just look through it as your DevOps administrator uh, I just want to give him like a role maybe he can uh, uh, deploy uh, machines uh, VMs and stuff like that so, 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 so application developer maybe or let's make him as your DevOps administrator what do you think All right, doesn't really matter. I just uh, let's let's select that role. Authentication. I don't want to give him that role. Let's uh, what role did we think that we're gonna give it to him? Uh, DevOps administrator. So let's give him this role. Um, and what do you wanna do? Once you come to this role, you can click on the add assignment, and from here you can select whoever you want to give that assignment to. So user one is the user where who I want to give that uh, role so it says this person is now added to this <coughs> to this role and once you have this uh, sort of save button or something no it's not so I think that's good at this time manage uh, PIM you can do that if you like so you can go uh, you can look at the Azure AD roles you can look at uh, assign eligibility and uh, we were looking at uh, Azure DevOps administrator and this one active roles if I go there I added that person right so you already have that person in here that's another place from where you can uh, assign roles now if I click on that user uh, assignment type is uh, active this person is uh, permanently assigned for this role so from this one you can uh, add some comments so he is needed something like that and you can hit save okay and so so now I have assigned a, a role to this person okay so let's see if I can see something a little bit better on over here so I'm still signed in as uh, that person I think I need to sign out or let's just uh, refresh it and see if as you already knows that I have a new role available to me so I'm just gonna yeah so see uh, as soon as I change and provided that role it says your role is as your DevOps administrator so you can click and that that role uh, it's a built-in role and the other thing uh, sometimes you have to go to the PIM and then accept the role so <clears throat> let me see if this role is registered in PIM uh, my role active roles yeah this one I really didn't have to do anything uh, expire roles eligible roles okay so that's kind of how you assign roles and uh, once I'm here I'm a DevOps operator so let's see subscription if anything shows up for me uh, I do not have a subscription available to me just yet so I need some more stuff uh, to be able to do things okay so let me go back to over here and go back to home and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create couple um, couple more users and go from there okay so let's see 
here I have um, users and I'm gonna create um, where is my easy user one can I copy this users I cannot so just to add a new user so is the 500 user 2 okay and I'm gonna use the same name for this person let me change it to password okay I'm not using anything okay uh, what I'll do I'll do instead of create I'll do invite user from here this time actually so let's uh, put uh, put what put uh, easy 500 user 1 uh, user 2 at gmail dot uh, gmail dot com that's what I'm gonna use uh, here for the email address okay Uh, nothing else I don't need to do anything else job IT title VM admin and department is IT okay and uh, send the invite to this user and uh, what we'll do we'll do another one and this time also I'll do the invite user I do the whole thing instead of two. I'm gonna do three and uh, three and send the invite again. Uh, before that, I'm also gonna do VM admin. Okay, and uh, department is IT. Now now what you have now you have three different users okay and they can't really do much until we assign that permission okay now adding permissions individually to all these users that becomes time consuming so what you really want to do is to create a group okay so if you come to the group and uh, you just hit on click groups and you typically if you don't have office 365 pretty much most of the time you'll be using a security group and group name say called VM admin group and uh, assign means every single time uh, you uh, you want to add someone you have to go to this group and add it manually like it's individual no one will be automatically assigned so let's create this group okay now I have VM admin so I can go in there again and in this group what we can do uh, members we can go to members and say bring in uh, one of these guys okay uh, let's see if we can bring in AZ user 2 although he's not even authenticated let's see if we can if we can add this person over here so right there so he's added okay now we can do this but there are other ways you can automatically add uh, people when when you're creating a new person or new new person based on certain rules okay so how to do that so for that uh, we use something called uh, uh, dynamic rules and for that we already have one uh, group it's assigned okay so let's create one another group which is based which is a dynamic group so let's create another one let's create uh, VM admin dynamic okay and here a device is for for for, for user devices we're not gonna look into that but it's the user is what we're interested in and here you can uh, define the query that it's gonna use and add expression 
uh, actually we already have one we just need to look at so what we were doing we were looking at title job title and job title to uh, contains say VM admin that's what we have been using okay and that's that's over here that's what you need so if this if anybody any person if they have the job title VM admin so that person should be assigned to this group and I can now hit the create and now you have this group so if you go in this group okay and then you go to members and one thing that you see that uh, there is no button to add new members because you cannot add new members in here okay so now let's try to add now this rule that we just created it takes just a little bit of time to uh, run uh, it will t it will take a little bit of time and, and the other users that we created they will probably be pulled in here so at this time let's go back to uh, our users one more time and let's create a new user uh, actually invite it and do uh, az user 4 and uh, <coughs> and I don't need any of that any of that use it location not so VM admin is again the job title department I'm gonna put IT okay and I'm just gonna say let's invite this user okay so let's go back to my, our group second and see if that rule is doing its magic or not so if I go in there uh, VM admin dynamic if I click on it and uh, let's uh, try to find if we have any members it's still not here uh, let's go go look at the dynamic rules one more time dynamic membership rules and uh, edit okay well what I did I just came over here added a space at the end of this rule uh, somebody said there is a bug or something in this rule and if you uh, add a space and hit enter then it rules takes uh, effect very very quickly so we'll, we'll test that one so <coughs> dynamic members still no one in here dynamic rules okay so this uh, let's try validate rules it says the validation in group is good please add users first before validation okay so let's try to use one of the users just to validate this rule okay so that's a nice feature that I didn't know about so click on that one so it says it's validated so view details so is this user contents of VM admin yeah so okay so uh, save okay uh, let's go back to members again and uh, groups I'm gonna try it again uh, beam dynamic and let's see if it's pulling up anything yeah <laughs> so it took some time as I said so this uh, don't get frustrated uh, right after adding the rule if nothing is happening it takes a little bit of time so what it's telling you all four of these users they got they are matching the root property that we have set uh, and the root property you can always examine using the dynamic rule so right now what we did we just created dynamic rule and if you want to keep the other group like if they're part of a bigger group and you can pull in different type of things in the bigger root group uh, now you can go back to the group okay uh, in in this group uh, you can add members and instead of adding a member in this group what you can do you can remove this member from here okay 
and uh, add member and and let's see if you can actually select the group instead of the member okay so what is the group it's the VM admin okay VM admin dynamic so I'm adding the dynamic group as a member to this static group where you need to add more stuff so this you can add other type of people to this group as well uh, and if I save so I think it's already saved right now so if I go back so this group is that pulled in everything and in this assigned group which is a static group uh, we have configured to pull in everything from the other group so now if I go in there I should should see the uh, these people and uh, these people got these guys but this usually will take some time and and this other group will probably show the other people just like it took some time uh, it will do the same thing and I created something like that before for the lab administrator and I'll tell you if I go to members uh, okay this is how yeah yeah it will it will it will uh, pull up the different people and you can go in and you can see who will who is member of what group so I guess uh, what we have shown so far is how to create user users how to create groups and how to create uh, assigned group and how to create dynamic groups and add rules and uh, let's do couple other things in there let's go back to the active directory one more time go to users and uh, if you see all these users uh, the one of the important thing that you should be doing for these users you should <coughs> enable the multi-factor authentication and it's usually in this bar and in this the triple dot that you have you just click on it and uh, oh, oh, it's not there so let's click on here and see if it's uh, letting me do okay so here it took me to the multi-factor authentication page and uh, where I can do the bulk object so it's saying select a user so what I really want I want to select everybody okay and uh, eight selected some others uh, it's just saying that it's disabled so so <clears throat> look what is important so all the users that we have already authenticated and they're available in active directory they can use the multi-factor authentication okay the other people is disabled okay so let's not do everybody this is just do one person and I'll just say uh, bulk update so it should uh, Okay, no, not the bulk update. So maybe <coughs> just enable. Okay, this is just uh, showing me whether it's enabled or not. So right now everything is disabled. So let's see if I can do it from here. Enable it. No, it's not showing me. So let's go back over here one more time <coughs> let me go to this person and what I'm gonna do MFA I'm just going to multi for authentication. See, uh, uh, <coughs> multi authentication use uh, MFA with Azure AD. <laughs> and since the best way to use MFA in the cloud and to apply your users using conditional access. So. All right, maybe I'll we'll do the MFA in the next uh, next video. Uh, so here it looks like uh, all the settings for the MFA. So it's probably better we'll just do it in the next video. 
previously I thought that you can just enable it from that Active Directory users and that's what I wanted to quickly show you but uh, it seems like uh, that is not working anymore at least not for me uh, so we'll we'll take a look at that where I have that option uh, moved to and then uh, we'll do that exercise so hope this has been useful uh, to you and if you have any question please feel free to uh, leave a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as we can thank you